Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Tails operating system for ultimate security and privacy. So let's get started. So I've had a lot of requests on how to set up the Tails operating system. The Tails system is a specialized operating system that boots from a USB flash drive and gives you ultimate privacy and security. So I'm here on their website. I'll put a link to this down in the description below. Uh, it explains what Tails is, what it's all about, why you should use it, uh, that it's portable, it's free, open source, based on the Debian Linux operating system. It's a little bit tricky to get installed and to get running, so I'm going to walk you through every step of the way. The first thing we need to do is get it installed on one of our flash drives. And then the next step, of course, will be configuring our computer to boot from the flash drive. So there's a lot of choices for flash drives that you can use. Uh, I particularly like SanDisk. I've been using them for many years. And every year they get more advanced and uh, higher capacity. So uh, pretty cool. Get your hands on a flash drive. You've probably got one laying around in a drawer somewhere. You need one that has at least eight gigabytes of storage on there. And these days, I don't even think you can get an eight gigabyte anymore. They start around 32. So um, if it's a couple years old, you're probably going to be fine, right? But just make sure it's got more than eight gigs. All right. So once we've got our uh, flash drive ready to go, keep in mind that it is going to get erased when you uh, install Tails. So we'll go down here to install Tails and I'm running on a Windows machine. Now, when you boot up a computer using the Tails operating system from a flash disk, you don't have to worry about viruses. Any viruses that may have been on that computer's hard drive are totally bypassed by the Tails operating system. But when you're creating your Tails system using a flash disk, you do need to be aware that the system that you're using should be free of viruses during the creation process. So make sure that whatever computer you're using to create your Tails disk uh, is free of viruses. You've got good virus and anti-malware protection on the computer. You've done recent scans so that you can create a clean Tails system. I'm using Windows, so I'll start over here. All right, as I mentioned, uh, you'll need a USB stick with at least eight gigabytes of capacity. Uh, I'm using Windows 11, so I'm okay here. Uh, my computer has plenty of RAM. Uh, and you'll need a smartphone or a printer. And you're going to need to set aside a little bit of time. All right, so the first thing we'll do is click Download. We can just drop this in our Downloads folder. All right, and then we'll open that up. And you can see the disk image that we have here. So when we download open source software, we should always run verification checks to make sure that we have a good copy of the installer that hasn't been corrupted or altered in transport and that it has been signed by the developers. So there's an easy way and uh, a more secure and thorough way to do it. And I'll just briefly touch on both of those. So as you can see, I've got the Tails image downloaded and it's in my downloads folder on my computer. So uh, next is the verification step. Now, the easy way to do this is to just click, head over to our downloads, click on the image that we just downloaded and click open. And it's going to do a verification. All right, and it's successfully verified. That's pretty cool. Now there's another way to do this that's a little more thorough, it has to do with uh, open PGP signatures. If you click here, it'll give you some resources. The first thing is the signature file. Uh, if we click on here, it's going to download a signature file that has the exact same name as the image that we just downloaded. You want to put that in the exact same folder that you downloaded the image. And then you can check it out here. See, we've got uh, the signature and the image are right next to each other. And we'll use some specialized software to run that check. We're also going to need the signing key of the developers. So we'll click here and drop that right in there next to the other stuff. 
So now that we've got all three of these files, uh, we'll run some specialized software. I'll put a link to this down in the description below. Uh, the name of this program for Windows is Cleopatra. Cleopatra is some software that is included in the GPG for Windows. The GPG for Win. <laughs> I'll put a link to this down in the description below. Once we've got Cleopatra launched, the first thing we'll do is import that developer key that we downloaded. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to switch this to all files. They've got kind of a strange extension on it, but it should work. And there we go. It tells us that we're importing a key. I'll go ahead and certify this. There are other more rigorous ways to verify this signature, but I'm just going to take it as uh, valid. All right. And there we go. We'll click certify. Now we have the proper developer signatures in our list here. See, we've got the Tails developer here. All right. So once we've got that, we can do our verification step. We'll click Decrypt Verify. We'll go to Downloads, and we'll click right on the uh, installer image. Click Open. And it's going to do its uh, verification there. And that's what we want to see, a nice green verification. It checked that signature file um, for the installer against the uh, developer signature and everything is good right so uh, that is the if you're into security and opsec that is the ultimate way to verify cryptographically a downloaded file but the uh, earlier one that i showed you is probably just as good too all right, and then the next step is uh, an, a little program called Balanetcher. There are lots of different programs that can write an image file to uh, a flash drive so that it's bootable, uh, and they have one preferred here. I have a program called Power ISO that can do the same thing, but I'll stick with their uh, recommended little utility here. So we'll go ahead and download this. We'll just drop that in our downloads folder, and then we can go over here and run it. Now that we've got this uh, running, we need to uh, put our flash drive in our computer. I'll just go ahead and insert this uh, blank flash drive in the computer. I believe it will overwrite any data that you have on there, so be careful it's not something you need. Um, and you might want to just format the flash drive beforehand. So the first thing we'll need is that file that we downloaded. We'll need to uh, select that. We'll go over to our Downloads folder and select the Tails image. All right, and the next thing we'll do is select the destination, Target. All right, so we'll select our Target. I'll use my SanDisk Extreme, which I have really loved over the years. <sighs> Had it for a few years. We'll choose Select here. All right, and let's see what happens now. There it goes. Yay. <laughs> Okay, so we're done there. We'll go ahead and finish this off. Let's go back to our instructions. Now they have a QR code that you can scan with your phone. So you can just use your phone to scan this and it'll put the instructions right on your phone. Or you can print this whole thing out on a piece of paper. You might want to stick to the phone. That looked like to be about 15 pages <laughs> oh boy okay all right so now we're going to boot from uh, our usb stick now they have some instructions for windows here uh, that will uh, direct windows to look for a usb device on the next boot and then they mention a boot screen here so as you can see i've got a blank screen over here this uh, monitor is connected to a secondary uh, machine that I'm going to use. I'll continue to record on my main rig, but basically uh, you just want to insert this into your computer as it's uh, shut down. Um, you could choose uh, a drive here or in the back of the machine. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And every boot screen is different, so I'm going to take you through mine. Now there's a little bit of a trick to getting into the BIOS of your computer and it uh, requires you to hit a special key. Sometimes it's F2, sometimes it's delete. 
Uh, but one thing you need to remember is you cannot just hold the key down. Uh, if you hold the key down, it's going to make a uh, horrible beeping sound. So basically, uh, as you're booting up your computer, you want to just uh, softly uh, tap that key. All right, you'll, I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm just kind of slowly tapping my delete key. All right. Uh, so now you can see my boot screen. And as I mentioned, every boot screen is different. Uh, you want to go into the settings and you should be able to find a boot menu somewhere. <laughs> You'll click on that. Now, in this case, what we want to do is uh, go into boot order. And as you'll notice here in my boot order, the uh, first one is a USB uh, key. Uh, and uh, if you're going to use this computer uh, for Tails, uh, once you have set this in the BIOS, it will always look for a USB key to boot from so that uh, after you're done, uh, as long as you don't have your Tails flash drive in, uh, inserted, it will, nor it will boot normally uh, onto the hard drive every time. And then all you'll have to do if you wish to boot from Tails is shut down the computer, insert the flash drive, and it will always check for it. Once it finds it, it'll boot up from there. Uh, fun fact, uh, in the old days, which many of you probably don't uh, recall in person, but every desktop computer used to, by default, always check for a floppy drive in uh, first before it booted from a hard drive because the original desktop computers booted from floppy drives. And so uh, most of the older BIOS will always check for a floppy drive uh, for a system drive uh, first. A uh, bit of old uh, desktop trivia there. Uh, but so now we have the boot priority set up to check for a USB key uh, every time the computer boots. So now I'm gonna hit F10 and uh, I'll just hit enter or you can click yes. That's a little hard to read there. This particular machine needs a little bit of coaxing. Uh, I don't know what your situation might be, but it might, you might need to uh, turn the computer off and on again to get it to boot from your flash drive. We'll see, looks like uh, it's gonna do it this time. And there we go, we're in tails. Uh, the first option is fine. Uh, you can switch it around if you're having trouble, but it will uh, boot up from Tails by default. All right, and this is the setup screen where you can set your language and keyboard and formats uh, depending on your country and your language. Also, you can enable persistent storage here. Generally, when you use Tails in its default configuration, there will be no persistence whatsoever so that every time you start it up, you're going to have to do all this initial configuration, uh, which is fine if you want to maintain ultimate privacy and security, but you also might want to have some persistent storage in case you want to save some things like logins or documents or anything that you might create. The persistent storage is going to be encrypted. There will, there will be a, a password on it so that if anyone finds your Tails uh, flash drive, they won't be able to read it. And it does add a little bit of convenience to the process without having to reconfigure every time you boot up. So I'm going to go ahead and enable persistent storage as we get going here. We'll start up Tails. All right, and it's going to start with persistent storage. We'll uh, continue there. We'll go ahead and put our passphrase on there. Now they want this to be really long. I'm just going to, I just used a relatively short password, something that I'll remember. But this is an encrypted drive, so the recommendation is to use a really long password or what we might call a passphrase with multiple words. All right, and then you can enable some things to go ahead and start up automatically for you uh, once you have persistent storage. I won't do the network connection, but if you wanted to remember your, pass, uh, your Wi-Fi passwords and stuff like that, you might want to enable this. Uh, I'll set the Tor bridge. Uh, I'll allow it to save my bookmarks. 
and then a couple of programs that uh, we want as defaults. Notice they've got a little uh, chat messenger here that you could uh, enable. I'll just enable them all. All right, and then the first startup here is going to be our tour. Uh, I'll just choose connect to tour automatically and use a bridge. Uh, if you're a little more advanced, you might want to check out some of these hidden options. If maybe you're a journalist or someone that wants to uh, avoid detection, you can get a private bridge from Tor. They'll email you. Or if you have a Tor bridge that you're aware of, uh, you can use here as well. Uh, I'll just stick with the uh, default here. All right, it's going to go ahead and connect to the Tor network. And then you can start the Tor browser. All right, so now we've launched the Tor browser. Yeah, they're complaining that my passphrase or password for my persistent storage isn't uh, long enough to resist a state-sponsored attack should they get my device in their possession. Um, but as long as you keep your device hidden in a good place, no one's going to get uh, possession of the device. They're giving us ultimate security tips, right? Now, uh, the Tor browser is a web browser that uh, runs... Uh, with encryption so that uh, no one can uh, see your traffic. And, uh, but I should point out that just using Tails and the Tor browser is not going to maintain your privacy and security if you start doing things that are related to your identity, like logging into your email accounts or Microsoft accounts or your YouTube account so that you've got your history. Uh, all of that stuff is uh, going to generate identifying information that uh, Tails and Tor cannot protect you from. So when you're using Tails, you want to sort of only use it for um, what it's designed for, right? If you want to log into your normal accounts, then use your normal computer. When you're using Tails, you want to avoid that kind of stuff. Now, uh, I'll note that, that this is a very rich operating system. Notice they've got the Cleopatra built in. Uh, key pass, which is great for storing your passwords. You'll want to store uh, the key pass file in your persistent storage if you use it so that you'll have access to it each time you start up. Uh, and then there are a number of uh, privacy related applications here. It's a full service operating system. It also has the LibreOffice system built in. And if you want to use this and save your documents, you'll save that on your persistent storage as well. So a very uh, rich system that you can use. Now, when you're using the Tor browser, you can uh, do normal searches, such as uh, local uh, latest news, and it will use the DuckDuckGo search engine to search for uh, news or whatever you're looking for. Now, uh, keep in mind, though, that if you're using the Tor browser, uh, and you try to log into uh, a .com website that only you will be encrypted. You're looking at a site that's on the clear net, so the site itself is not going to have encryption, right? So basically, uh, the best thing that you can do is uh, look for .onion sites. You can do that by maybe searching for Hidden Wiki, and uh, you can go to the Hidden Wiki site, now, take note that this site itself is on the ClearNet. It ends in .org, but it does have a whole bunch of onion links that will take you to .onion sites, which are encrypted. And one of those is another uh, a hidden wiki and another hidden wiki. So you can visit this site on the darknet with a .onion extension by clicking this link here. Okay, and so you can see that the site ends in .onion now. And so now we're on a, an encrypted website using an encrypted browser. And this is ideal. And then uh, you can find a lot of other sites that you might want to visit. Uh, there's a lot of sites related to privacy and news and things that you can find. Uh, just uh, for ultimate security, uh, it's better to stick with .onion websites. Uh, there's a lot of illicit content on the dark web. I'm not advocating that you use any of this stuff. Uh, all I'm saying is that if you use Tails and you use the Tor browser, that uh, you'll be able to maintain privacy and security 
while you're browsing the web. And there's a lot of chat rooms and newsrooms that are available where you can uh, browse anonymously and interact anonymously. All right, so that's it. That's an overview of how to get Tails set up and configured. Uh, best of luck to everyone. If there's any questions that you have about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.